Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at some more tips and tricks for working in D5 Render. All right, go ahead and get into it. The first thing we want to mention today is cartons and curtain rods. You may realize that D5 has actually a bunch of curtain models. But what you might not realize is you can actually adjust these because the default ones tend to be a little bit maybe too wide or sometimes a little bit too short. So what we have to do is select our object and then over here on the right under the basic tab, you'll see we've got options for size. Now by default, these are linked. And so you can see if you're trying to adjust your curtain to get it to fit, it's not gonna look very good. So one thing we can do is just turn off the size linking and then manually adjust our cartons. We can make it as sort of long or as wide as we need. And we can also make them as tall or as short as we need as well. Now, this is really useful for getting curtains to fit into a space that maybe doesn't niche sort of originally line up with sort of the D5 curtain dimensions. You can also then pretty easily just duplicate this curtain and as such, maybe you can start layering multiple curtains on top of each other. It's a really nice trick. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is curtain rods. Uh, oftentimes, you know, you'll build a room and throw some curtains up in the window and be like, oh, this is great, and realize the curtains are effectively floating. Now, you don't actually have to bounce back to SketchUp or Blender or 3D Studio Max or whatever. If we just hit M on the keyboard, we can open up our, basically the sort of basic model tabs here, we're going to just turn this into a very simple curtain rod without leaving D5. Hit V on the keyboard, scale it all the way down, and you can take this down pretty far. Now, you'll also notice that um, if we try and maybe just extend this on a particular axis, it is going to do the same thing. It's universally scaling. So select your curtain rod, turn off the universal scaling on under the basic and size tab, and then I'm going to just grab this blue axis and just take this up all the way. And again, we can adjust at any point to scale this down if we want by turning back on the universal scaling. And yeah, that looks pretty, pretty good. And then all we have to do is rotate it and position it in place. Pretty easy way of just creating a basic curtain rod within D5 without having to go back to your other programs. The next thing we want to mention uh, is to do with buildings in D5. And did you know that you can actually adjust the materials on some of these buildings? So, for example, let's go to the skyscraper right here. If you actually just hit I on the keyboard and bring up the eyedropper tool, you can actually see that we have all of these maps plugged in, but we can adjust the overall color of the building. Now, some of the buildings are actually even more modular in nature. For example, this one over here, where you can see we could have hit M on the keyboard, maybe grab a red brick material and place it on. And it'll actually assign itself to specific parts of the model. And you can go in here and just like any other material, use the eyedropper and adjust, for example, the stretch and the scale or even the base color of the material itself. So you can actually kind of have more interesting exterior buildings. It also allows you to reuse effectively the same model again and again and just changing the exterior material. Please note, you might mess up the mapping a little bit here. You can see kind of brick running the wrong way, but from distance, it's pretty nice to be able to just have the same building being reused, but with a different exterior texture map. It's just enough to break up the illusion or the effect of sameness with these buildings. And one other thing to note, if the projection doesn't go on correctly, like this right here, please note you can always just rotate it and hit 90 and enter, and there it is. It's a really cool thing that I didn't realize until recently, but it's great to be able to reuse the buildings with just different texture maps assigned. The next thing I want to mention is fixing seams within D5 Render. If you use SketchUp for your workflow, like SketchUp to D5 to Photoshop or something along the lines of that, you're probably using a lot of models from the SketchUp warehouse. These tend to not have really good texture mapping or UVs. And sometimes you'll get a really nice object, but you'll see a really obvious seam. So for example, we can kind of see one right here, and there's a couple of others on this object. Now, 
In order to fix this, we could go in here, use all of the AI tools to create better texture maps, but you're still gonna have sort of ugly seams. And there's really not much way to fix that unless you UV unwrap it, or we go down here in D5 to the triplanar projection and we turn that on. Now a triplanar projection is gonna do a much better job wrapping the texture on a non UV unwrapped object. But look, you're still getting a big seam and one thing that people forget is there's a blend button right down here. So under the triplanar option, you can see a bit of a scene. This is better projection, but a larger scene. We can grab the blend amount and ask D5 to effectively smudge the triplanar seams. Now this is a small thing, but uh, sometimes you'll find yourself working with an object that you really, really like, but short of going back and UV unwrapping it, you can't get rid of the seams but the blend amount slider will actually do that for you. You can see D5 does a really good job of sort of smudging the scene. It's not quite as good as texture painting across scenes, but it is really, really cool. One other thing to note while we have an object right in front of us, if you're moving and rotating objects in D5, you may encounter something like this. You, you desperately want to get your decorative element lined up correctly, and yet it seems to be bouncing all over the place. Well, if we hold down shift, you'll actually notice that we get basically a snapping free rotation. And this will allow you to rotate more incrementally by singular degrees, as opposed to letting D5 kind of do it for you. You can see I'm going from zero to six to eight to 10 versus holding down shift. I get all of my incremental degrees back. It's a small thing, but in terms of quality of life, you really want to have that control. When it comes to duplicating in D5 Render, you're probably aware that you can select an object and hold down Shift and drag out a duplicate, or we can also do Control D to basically copy a duplicate. Now, one problem you'll encounter with this is if I select this material, for example, and I change one, you'll notice I am basically changing all of them. These duplicates do chain or do basically have the same material ID assigned. In other words, D5 sees them as copies of the same object. One way we can get around this though, is by going Alt D, and you can see I've got an exact duplicate that's got the red color, but when I hover over it, D5 recognizes it as its own separate object. And I can go in here and change the colors or adjust the base map or do anything else that I wanna do with this without having to worry about changing the color of all of the objects. It's a small thing, but if you have a decorative object that you really like the look of, but you want to see color variations, or you just want to break up the sameness of having the same object again and again, then what you want to do is Alt D to give yourselves unique duplicates. The next thing we want to mention is a little tip on how to add imperfections to your materials. Now, strictly speaking, D5 does not have a way to plug in an imperfections map into your normal material maps. So we're going to kind of fake it a little bit by shoving imperfections into the specular slot. Let's go ahead and take a look. So you can see we've got this wood material. It's a default SketchUp material, like it's a pine sort of wood flooring laminate type thing it's a little bit too shiny it does have a specular map but it seems to me that the specular is just looking almost like a sort of like clear coat sheen on top so what we can do is download an imperfection map you can get these from quixel mega scans or somewhere like that and let's plug it in to this specular slot you can see we've got a imperfections map plugged in to the specular over here now you can to see the effect it's having right there if we just kind of adjust the strength of the map a little bit but if we change the material color to kind of really dark you can really see what's actually going on now please note strictly speaking this is not i don't think considered physically based in terms of accuracy um you know realistically sort of the imperfection map should sort of be a part of the roughness map but I'm not entirely sure how you go about merging the two, strictly speaking. So this is a kind of quick and dirty and messy way of doing it. Again, I don't think it's physically accurate, but it does look okay. 
Let's change our environment to dark. So not quite fully dark, but just a little bit, just so you can kind of see what's going on. And then I'm just going to add one or two lights here and you can really see the effect. Now, the idea here being that real world materials will pick up grease, oil, dirt, smudges and imperfections. And as such, wood materials like this, especially laminate sort of plastic wood flooring, should not be perfectly smooth. But that's a little bit inaccurate. But at the flip side of this is just be careful. You want to make sure that if you're using these imperfection maps on anything other than maybe glass or flooring, you will want to make sure that it doesn't make your environment look dingy or dirty. Imperfections are kind of good up to a point. Anyway, that's uh, one quick way to just get your uh, imperfection map into D5. Another cool feature of D5 is that you can actually add your own artwork. So D5 comes with a really great array of different artwork for walls. They're really high quality, they look good, and they'll work in a lot of different environments. But maybe there's a chance you want to basically upload your own artwork. So if we take a look here really quickly, you can click on this picture on the right. And I'm going to go to base color map, click on this, and load up piece of artwork. Now it's done a really good job projecting it on there. It's not perfect but pretty good. Now all we have to do is right click and actually delete the normal and specular. Once we have that done we can hit the AI generated texture maps and ask D5 to generate a new normal and new specular map. Now please know these are not going to be as good as what you get if you did it by hand. There's just you know that's just not the way it works but it'll be good enough for the normal map at least to give you that nice textural look. We can also adjust the specular as well. All right, there we go. So with the normal map here, you can kind of see the effect we have. We can control the direction of light and shadow. We can also adjust how shiny or specular, and we can also determine the roughness value, which is really, really cool. And D5, we use the AI tool there up at the top, will also give you a AO or ambient occlusion map, which is really, really nice to make the scene pop. Uh, we've also got a couple of other options we can do here as well. If I click on this one here, I'm going to change the base color. Let's throw on this picture of this woman here. You can see this is in black and white, which is really cool. You can load up your pictures in color. And all we need to do to change that is to go to the settings here. And you can see under the HSB. So all we got to do is take that saturation slider back. Or if you like black and white artwork, load up any picture and just do this. Take this to the left. And also adjust the overall base color, which will determine the brightness or sort of dark value of the actual shot. Now, please be mindful as well, D5's artwork, some of them do come with a layer of glass in front of the actual picture. If that's the case, just holding down Alt will turn on what's called penetrating material selection, which means you'll effectively go through the layer of glass. But just be mindful, some will have that glass layer in front, which can give you a very shiny effect. But all in all, it's so cool to be able to effectively remove the pictures, add your own artwork, and don't forget, you can always add these to your own local library. If you've downloaded a material, maybe from Quixel Mega Scans or Polygon or one of the other material websites, and you've lined up all of the materials, loaded them into the right slot, but unfortunately found that instead of a roughness map, you've gotten a gloss map. And you can see this gloss map on this metal object does not work very well. Well, one thing you can do is just open up the roughness settings right here, and you'll see an option for inverted. Go ahead and click that. And so if we look at where the metal should actually be shiny and where it should not be, you can see now that is correct. The reason for this is a gloss map and a roughness map are the inverse of each other. In other words, if you have a gloss map, just inverting it will convert it to a roughness map and vice versa. So just keep that in mind. Some materials and some objects you'll find, depending on which version of sort of the PBR system they're using, may come with a gloss map instead of a roughness map. And if that's the case, just invert it within D5. Probably aware, uh, recently, maybe was it 2.4 or 2.5 or something, D5 introduced vines, procedurally generated vines, and they are pretty cool. 
Now, you can kind of see the interface for working with them is a little bit janky. You kind of pick the vine you want, and then you're supposed to find a flat surface, or D5 should find one for you, and you kind of just, like, get it on there good enough and hit generate, and then you mess around with the settings. Well, a uh, little bit of a janky interface, but pretty cool. But one thing you might not realize is you can get procedurally generated vines on curved surfaces. It's a little bit harder, but you can see if you kind of hover over the object you want, you'll get that sort of pre-projection uh, visual. Click and then do generate. Now, it's a little bit more janky, doesn't always work well, but it does allow you to then still go in here and adjust some of the settings. So I've used this maybe like once or twice just to get like this feeling of foliage growing out of a pot or vase or something akin to that. But all in all, it's still pretty cool, even if it's probably not how it was intended to be used. It's cool that in D5 you can get vines on curved surfaces. All right, speaking of curved surfaces, let's bounce over to one more thing. The last thing I want to talk about is glass, and more specifically in this case, glass on big, tall buildings. So, quite simply, normal glass that you would apply to a building, especially if you're doing video, doesn't generally look right. And the reason it doesn't look right is because it doesn't have a warble effect. It's, I believe, is it a Musgrave procedural effect, I think is what it's called? But quite simply, the normal glass in D5 just looks too flat. And if you're going to be showing off a building, particularly a skyscraper where it's reflecting the environment, you should have that sort of warble effect in the glass. Now, let's go ahead and just look at a quick way we can actually sort of mimic this, a really quick and fast way. We're just going to go to materials, and then we're going to look for glass. And so what we're going to look for is one that has a kind of wave effect. So this wavy grain glass, I'm going to click on that and actually assign it. Now, you can see this is way too pronounced. It's just really, really strong. And so what we need to do is just adjust this to get the effect we're going for. Now, the easy way to do this is just go in here, and it's actually, you can see, it's the normal map that is giving us this effect. So all we have to do is go in and put this on a very, very slight level. And now, for example, if this was animating along the side of a building, uh, you can kind of see, if I look here just a little bit, see how it's distorting kind of both the clouds and the reflection? That's what you want. Basically, a warble effect within your glass. Now, you may be thinking, why don't I just use some of the other glasses? Well, unfortunately, the normal maps on the other ones, so, for example, this glass block, you can see will actually have the square effect applied to it. And as such, it just won't work. So this is similar to using the Contaro glass in Twin Motion. Now, you can also, as well, go in here and adjust the thickness as well to make your glass seem more or less thick and adjust the refraction to affect, basically, the sort of see-throughiness of the glass, or the thickness, if you will. But all in all, that's how a quick and easy way to get a warble effect in your glass textures.